All right, with my first action, I'm gonna move Bob the Beaver forward too. I'm gonna use my second action to build a barrier piece using his effect. And for my third action, I'm going to move Cosmo the Magic Mouse forward four. I'm getting closer. You getting nervous? <laughs> I'll use my first action to move my knight forward one. Check the tile. That's a bomb. Ah, crap. Can I get the room for a second, man? I gotta take a call. Yeah, sure. Of course, when I'm winning. Alal, Balan, Dracavik, good evening. Greetings, Artificer. So good of you to take our call. Oh, how we've missed you. Well, it's only been a month. I see you every month. Still not internet famous, though, which is odd because I've been holding up my end of the deal. We've given you the tools to succeed. It's up to you how you use them. Well, you say that, but I developed my skill set before we met, so... Your skills are not the tools we speak of. Then what are the tools you speak of? If you have to ask, then you'll never know. <sighs> Jesus Christ, just once I love a straight answer. You'll have to work for that. Like always. But for now. Come on, let's, let's just get to it, man. Come on, you do this every time. Just, just, please, oh, Dark Ones, tell me, what does Lilith require this time? Something difficult. Something detailed. Something to defile. So same notes as always, got it. And she's sure she doesn't just want my soul instead? Dear Artificer, your soul isn't bad enough for hell. Well, how could that be? I'm a supervillain. No! <laughs> You're not really a villain. You just... kind of suck sometimes. You guys suck. Indeed we do. Among many other things. Gross. But like, seriously, it's getting unreasonable at this point. Like, for sure she wouldn't rather just have me in hell. Surely you've learned by now. Working for other people is hell. Well, you are right about that. Run along now, Artificer. Get to work. But don't feel the need to rush on our account. I'm sure we can find ways to entertain ourselves. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm going to be making Hellboy's right hand of doom. Okay, so for this project I'm going to be going with a full foam floor mat construction, so we're going to start cutting up some foam floor mats. For the most part I'm not really going to go with templates on this one, I'm just going to kind of free hand most of these. See what I did there? That's right baby, he's handsome and funny. Said no one ever. Well, well no one so far, you know, there's still time. Anyway though, I should explain what I'm doing. So I started by making a cuff that my fist can fit up into. Not too tight, but not too loose either, and this is going to be the base for the foam hand. Now the reason I'm not making templates for this and kind of just gluing stuff together and seeing what works is because I've never made something like this out of foam and I really don't know what shape the templates would need to be in to even do this. So I'm just going to start putting stuff together and carve and grind away until I get the shape that I want. The only part that I did make a template for is the fingers, because apart from length, they're all going to be pretty much the same shape, you know, so that just makes sense, and it's easy for me to conceptualize what that shape should be. 
So I cut out two pieces of foam for each finger because I'm gonna put some wire in between them to make them poseable and stay in the shape that I want. Otherwise they would just be sticking up straight and it would look silly. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut some channels inside the foam pieces so that I can stick the wire in there and then when the two pieces of foam come together, they can still sit flush against each other and not have a bulge in the middle because of the wire. The wire that I'm using is some sort of thick steel wire that I got from Lowe's like a million years ago and it's really hard to cut and it's actually really hard to bend too so if you decide to go this route with it I would definitely recommend using aluminum wire instead it'll be much easier to work with. And of course I don't want to take a chance of the wire ripping through the foam later on so I'm going to wrap the ends in a little bit of duct tape. Um, there's probably better things to use out there but I'm being forced to make this by weirdo demons that I don't really like so they get what they get. Also, it's worth noting that this entire project is going to be held together with contact cement. And to use contact cement, you put it all over both surfaces you want to join together, wait until the glue gets a little tacky, and then press them up against each other and it bonds pretty much instantly. So, make sure everything's lined up right when you do it, because you do not get a second chance. And now we come to the part that I have been dreading the most in this whole thing, which is figuring out how the palm is going to be made. It, maybe it seems obvious to some people out there, but just when I was trying to picture, you know, the flat shapes being converted into curved shapes, like what it should even look like, I, I had no idea. So I just decided to start cutting foam together and holding it up against the part that I had figured out and pushing it into place and kind of forcing it to be the shape I want. And then I'm just going to trim it because I don't know. I, it's the only way I could think to do it. But if you had any kind of similar issue, I hope watching my process unfold on screen will give you a better idea of how to solve your problems. Or maybe maybe you're better at designing patterns than I am. Who knows? I mean, you very well could be. I, I do not know what I'm doing. <laughs> how about that coming from the guy who's making the video on how he made the thing? You know, the audacity, am I right? No, but I, I think it's, uh, it's good to be transparent about this type of thing, you know, for like people who are just getting into making things, you know, to see that it's okay to not know what you're doing and just kind of guess, you know, and worst case, if you mess up, then you just start over. I mean, it's annoying, but you can always start over if something doesn't work out. So don't let a project that's giving you trouble discourage you, you know? But anyway, that's enough positivity out of me for now. Let's get back to the project I'm working on because I made a deal with demons to be famous. Now as you can see in the process of carving this, I ended up getting a little hole in the side, but that's not a big deal. You can just take a piece of foam, put some more contact cement, and glue it in, and then once you grind it down, it, it looks fine. It's, it's like it never even happened. And I did end up grinding the palm off screen, and I also rounded off the fingers a little bit to make them look a little, a little smoother. Uh, the reason I did that is because I just didn't think it was particularly interesting to watch that, but you know, if you want me to focus on grinding more in future videos, let me know in the comments. So what I was doing back there was a test fitting just to kind of see how the fingers are going to look when placed on the hand. And you may have noticed that to get the angle that I want for the thumb, I need to put a bit more foam. There was a bit of a void there. So I just cut another piece and I ground the edges of it at an angle so that I could fit it on there and get it to kind of curve as I attached it. And I'm just going to stick it on and hope that it creates enough material for me to use to angle that right. If that makes sense. You, you, you know the drill. Just, just, just watch and it'll make sense. And after a bit of fiddling, I get to a point where I'm happy with it. Or at least I can live with it. You know how it is. You're your own worst critic. Now before I glue the fingers on, I take a wood burner to them and burn in all of the segments of the fingers on Hellboy's hand. And you're definitely going to want to do this with a respirator because the smoke that comes off of this is very bad to breathe. So, you know, I'll always wear a mask when you're doing things like that. And after I made all the segments, I gently bend them to get them in a bit of a kind of relaxed open finger pose. I don't know how else to describe that. And then they are ready to be glued on. And the rest of this project is actually going to be really easy, which is great because I want to finish this up and get these creeps out of my house. I mean, God only knows what they're doing in there right now. Um, hi. Good evening. I, uh, take it you're the craftsman's guests? In a way. You could say we're his self-inflicted torment, as a result of his own avarice and pride. Well, either way, uh, welcome to our home. Uh, I am about to prepare a charcuterie board. Would any of you like to get in on that? Hmm. 
I know this next part should have been simple, but I overcomplicated it slightly. I made a cuff that was supposed to be the base of the hand, and then I was going to attach it to this big tube that's the forearm piece. This is about 10 inches long, and it is actually the same width as the cuff that the hand is sitting on. And I could have just made it a little longer and just made it one solid piece, but I didn't realize that they were going to be the same width at that time. So here we are. But anyway, Hellboy has two raised rings around his forearm, so we're going to make two slightly longer ones for that. And we're going to put a bunch of contact cement all over this and glue it all together, and this is roughly what it'll look like. No, I mean, I say roughly, that's like exactly what it's going to be. Actually, no, 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 roughly, because that's, that's actually pretty crooked right now. So yeah, more contact cement applied. Uh, be very careful when lining up, because again, you only have one shot at this. And then we get those pieces on, and then it is time to move on to cutting out some pieces for the knuckles. Now the knuckles are circular, and since it's hard to draw a perfect circle, I use the spray paint lid as a template. Then I use my bandsaw to cut them out, because I felt I could get a more level cut than using a hand knife. Hand knife, is that even a thing? You know what I mean, a razor blade. Um, but you could do it with a razor blade, I just felt like this was a better way for me personally to do it. And then after gluing the knuckles on, I believe we are done with the fabrication stage of the project, which means we can move on to detail work, which is my favorite part. Nope, I actually spoke too soon. I glued a piece of foam in there to act as a handle to hold on to when you're wearing the arm, and uh, we need to glue the hand into the forearm. But after that, on to details. Using a sharpie, I drew all the weird carvings on the forearm as well as all the cracks to make it look like stone. And I'm kind of going off of reference photos and I'm kind of guessing because I couldn't find a really solid picture to reference. So it's, it's probably not... Hey look, there's the wood burner again. Remember, wear a respirator. Very dangerous. But yeah, I'm just going over all the lines I mark, you know, getting the carvings, getting the cracks, and you know, if you veer off the marks a little bit, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, the important thing is you're having fun with it. And uh, eventually, you know, with enough details, it starts to kind of look like stone a little bit. And, or maybe film that's trying to look like stone, but, you know, artistic license is a thing, so that's that. And then next we want to seal it so that we can paint it. And to do that, I'm going to use Mod Podge. And I'm going to use some upholstery foam to stipple it all over the surface in hopes of giving it a little extra texture just to bring out that rockiness that we're trying to get. And then once the Mod Podge is dry, use upholstery foam to again stipple on three coats of acrylic red paint. Um, you could do less coats or more coats, three seem to do the job for me. And finally I went over the whole thing with some watered down brown paint to get into all those cracks and really bring out all the details that we burned into it. And with that it's finally done. Now to go get these demons out of my house. Done so soon. I guess time really does fly when you're having fun. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that, now would I? Here you go. Oh, Artificer, you've outdone yourself. This must have taken you hours. You know it did. A fine piece of craftsmanship. I know just where to put it. A few places come to mind. <laughs> How about you put it in hell and get out of my dining room? Ah, yes, of course. Besides, I'm sure Lilith is eager to receive her newest payment. We let her know you were asking about her. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Besides, I am not into her like that. Everyone's into her like that. Well, then she'd probably get back to adoring her then. An enticing prospect. Indeed. We'll see you again soon, Artificer. And do tell your roommate we appreciate the hospitality. That son of a...